You're listening to The Book Corner with Denise Harris. Is that better? Okay, let's get started. We're going to do urban legends tonight. And urban legends are a very important part of our, our culture. It gives us a different insight into our fears and state of society. Plus, it's also good fun. Um, Mikhail J. Coven, he's a folklorist at the University of Wales, states... Life is much more interesting with monsters in it, for sure, for sure. And like the variations of the stories themselves, followers all, uh, folklorists all have their own definition of what makes an urban legend. But the most popular base is that they are probably based on fact. Hi, Lori. Glad you can hear me now. Crazy thing. Okay. Uh, so... I believe urban legends, folklore, and everything started somewhere. They had to have a basis of fact somewhere. So that's, I, I believe that. Some people don't. They think it's just made up, but I don't think so. I, it, it just didn't come out of thin air. If that was the case, it'd be, uh, you know, under fiction. So we're going to get started here, um, with our first one. I believe we're going to do is uh, Bloody Mary. Okay, it's one of the most popular uh, urban legends told among young and old alike to this day. Come on, we still do it. We still do it, parties and functions, whatever the case is. And especially, you know, during sleepovers, but uh, it's a good party thing to do. And according to myth, if you turn out the lights, look into a mirror and say Bloody Mary three times, you will summon the spirit of Mary Worth a woman who is supposedly executed for being a witch. So we all know what happens, or you're supposed to see her. Um, it's a folklore legend consisting of a spirit conjured to reveal the future for us. Yay, thanks, Chris. Finally, yes, I'm, I'm getting the hang of being a technician. <laughs> so, and the Bloody Mary apparition allegedly appears as a corpse, a witch, or a ghost, and covered in blood. And it's usually malevolent. Uh, the, the lore surrounding the ritual states that um, participants may endure screaming, cursing at them. They're being strangled. Um, and the... <laughs> I hear you, Curtis. Um, the stealing of their souls or drinking of their blood. Yeah, and we still do it. How many times in some of the groups have we said, have, we, or ha have you done this? Heck yeah. It's just as um, popular as the Ouija board. So, there you go. And Bloody Mary, I know I've done it. We have a blast with it sometimes. Sometimes not. Sometimes, you know, we think we see something. Not sure. Not sure. Could be wishful thinking. Don't know. If there's a question or, you know, you want to hear about a folklore, let me know. What's your favorite folklore? Let me know in the chat what your favorite folklore is. The next one I'm going to do is called The Vanishing Hitchhiker. Now, this is uh, not anything new. Um, could be called The Lady in White, you know, the ghost on the side of the road. They call it The Vanishing Hitchhiker. That's where it started. It's probably one of the oldest urban legends, and it's still being told today. And it, the story tells of a motorist who picks up a female hitchhiker on a lonely, dark road. And, and then the driver... You know, drives her home. He's having a conversation, a kind of a conversation. She's kind of quiet. Um, he drives her home, only to find he let, goes to let her out of the car, and she's not there. She's gone. So the driver goes up to the house, knocks on the door, and asks about uh, the girl and finds out that she had died in a car accident along that stretch of road. Um, the vanishing hitchhiker has been reported for centuries, and the story is found across the world. Um, 
Brunvard, author of The Vanishing Hitchhiker, says it can be traced as far back as the 1870s. So this this one is one of the uh, very oldest. And like I said, um, we know it as the woman in white on the side of the road, lady in white. Um, but the actual name of it is The Vanishing Hitchhiker. And I don't know if any of you have experienced that. Thank God I haven't. I think I would probably have a heart attack. But he mentioned seeing some books, too, um, where you can find the stories of your urban legends and folklore. And the next one I'm going to talk about is The Killer in the Back Seat. Now, me, I'm always, when I turn my car on, the first thing I do is look in the back seat because this is not happening. I guarantee you to me. Um, that's the first thing I do. And with a big SUV, I look way in the back and the back seat. So the killer in the backseat, it's a popular urban legend that never seems to die. It tells the story of a woman who is driving alone dark, down a dark, lonely road, of course, only to have a strange car pull up behind her and flash its lights. And it, at times it can ram the car or, you know, constant, you know, tailgating really, really close. And it's constantly, you know, flashing its lights. Do you, Lori? Yeah, it's fun. Um, anyway, as she takes her exit and heads home, the car is still behind her, tailgating and kind of hitting her car a little bit, not exactly ramming her, just uh, tapping it. She pulls into her driveway and is ready to make a run for her front door because she don't know who this guy is, what is going on. Um, but she hears a stranger get out of the, his car and yell at her to get back inside and call 911. The stranger was trying to protect her. In her back seat was a man who was holding a butcher knife, ready to stab her to death. The stranger had noticed his shadowy figure and flashed his lights and tapped her car to get her attention, after which the figure slouched back down. And each time the killer sat up, the stranger would use his high beams and, you know, get the uh, killer's attention, and he would uh, slouch back down. So... Um, always check your back seat. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going there. Not going to happen. And you know, we've heard so many stories about you know the uh, like people hiding under your car at night, especially around the holidays. You know, you know, attacking you. They grab your feet or whatever. Um, so just be just be aware of your surroundings and look around. But that is one of the um, uh, popular, most popular ur- urban legends. Now, you can't tell me that didn't come from somewhere. Okay, that just did, that story, urban legend, did not come out of thin air. I, I really believe that all these have a basis somewhere. Somewhere in the history, you're going to find um, a relation to something that did happen. Excuse me. Okay, the next one is, and we all know. Yeah, I always check my shower. Are you kidding me? Yes. You know, when you get soap in your eyes, you you, you know, you start finding names for your guide dog. Anyway, <laughs> the next one, we all know this one. Any of us girls who have babysat? And I've, I've known, uh, I knew this story when I was babysitting. So that tells you how old it is. It's really old. So um, it's called The Babysitter and the Man Upstairs. And it dates, this dates back to the 1960s. And the legend tells the story of a babysitter that start getting strange phone calls. They get progressively more personal. And it concludes with this person on the other end asking her, have you checked on the children? Uh, the babysitter calls the police, who proceeds to trace the call, immediately calls her back, telling her to get the kids out of the house immediately. The call is coming from inside the house. Yes, UrbanLegends.com. Thank you, Chris. I'll give that a plug. That's one of the uh, places you can go for a lot of urban legends. Um, Anyway, the calls are coming from inside the house itself. The police arrive to find a man in the upstairs room where the kids are sleeping, but it's too late and the children have been brutally murdered. Yes, it does. Um, There's tons of stuff on urban legends, which I think is interesting, interesting. Um, and like I said, th- these just didn't come from storytelling. You know, the storytelling are of ghosts and monsters and stuff. This is, um, I think there's a basis for it in the, in the history. 
Uh, the babysitter and the man upstairs is also, of course, we know has been adapted in a number of times. When a stranger calls in 1979, the sitter in 77, and amusement in 2008. It's at, now, here's a good example. This is actually based on a crime that happened in 1950. March 18th, to be exact, which is kind of weird. That's my dad's birthday. But 15-year-old Janet Christman was babysitting 3-year-old Gregory Romack. And uh, she was babysitting, and a window broke and uh, shattered into the living room. But the strange thing, the Romacks came home and found uh, Janet Christman on the floor. She had been hit with a blunt instrument, but she had been um, hit, raped, and strangled. The kids weren't hurt. But she was, and the police didn't uh, couldn't figure out. They believe it happened from inside the house because um, none of the lights or the uh, window itself. There was nothing wrong with it. It was just the glass. So they they believe that uh, the the killer was already in the house, and it was a neighbor. Um, they figured, I think his name was Mueller. Uh, he had been making inappropriate. Uh, comments and gestures to her in the past. And of course, this was the 1950s. You did not do that. Um, now we would just punch them out. But uh, that's, we, it's, it's, they believe that's what the babysitter and the man upstairs is um, based on. So there it is. There's the basis of your, of your urban legend. Um, so I, I, like I said, I really believe that it comes from somewhere. So um, what's your, anybody, Lori, what's your favorite urban legend? Uh, give me, let me know. The next one I have is interesting. It's called, aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light? I don't know if anybody's heard of this one. I haven't heard of this one, so I found it kind of interesting. Um, it's a, it's, this is, uh, legend is widely known across college campuses. And the legend says that two girls, um, they're about to have this huge test the next day. So one of the girls gets invited to a party. The other one stays back. When she returns to her dorm, she doesn't want to wake her friend up, so she doesn't turn on the light, doesn't make any noise. She just um, gets and goes. She goes straight to bed. But when she wakes up in the morning, she rolls over to find her friend had been brutally murdered during the night. And written on the wall in blood is the phrase, "Aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light?" Have you heard that one? That one I hadn't heard of. So. That one I thought was interesting to me. There's just so many. It's hard to pick and choose. Hard to pick and choose. This one, anybody who um, doesn't like clowns better not listen to this one. <laughs> uh, I, I did not know about that one, about the um, aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light. That That's just downright creepy. These are creepy. I, I just can't. I, I can't imagine even... Uh, doing that. The next one I have is called the clown statue. <laughs> An urban legend tells the story of a babysitter who calls the uh, parents to see if she she can cover up this creepy clown statue. She's really freaked out about it, and um, it's in the corner. So she asks them if she can just throw something over it, so she has to look at it. The living it's in the corner of the living room. And the dad tells her. Very seriously, he's like, uh, 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 grab the kids, go next door and call 911. She's like, okay. Um, she didn't have any other explanation. And once the police are on their way, she calls the, the parents back. And they then explained that they didn't have a clown statue. And furthermore, the kids had been um, complaining about a clown who watches them when they sleep. Oh, creepy. Okay, you know this one too. Dang, where'd you hear all these from? Oh, never mind. You're a writer. That that makes sense to me. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> uh, they were complaining about a clown who watches them while they're sleeping. And the parents had uh, just, re you know, brushed it off as nightmares or imagination. They didn't take much stock in it. So, but... The most popular version of the explanation for the clown statue is that, uh, listen to this one, that, that, that it was a midget who had been living in their house for some time, undetected, and when the babysitter came over, he didn't have time to hide, so he froze in the corner, uh, which I, I was like, mm, okay, that, <laughs> I thought it was kind of fun.